Hi, welcome back to Satoku Tech. At work, I'm the Azure AD Connect subject matter expert. I even have my own playlist. I've been waiting for Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync to come out. This would essentially replace my on-premise AD Connect servers and SQL servers with a cloud service. We're going to go through the steps of this simple tutorial here to install a rudimentary implementation of this Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. Here you see where you install the agent must have 4 gigabytes of RAM and .NET 4.7.1. Here's the firewall requirements. And let's go ahead and install this Azure AD Connect provisioning agent. I'm going to do it on my domain controller in my lab, although I do not recommend installing anything other than Active Directory and DNS on a domain controller. In my Azure instance, you see here I just have two cloud users essentially. This is my cloud administrator account, so it's a cloud only account with the global administrator role assigned. You need that to configure this service. Here's my on-premise Active Directory. You can see I've got some users and I've got some groups and each of these groups has its own unique group membership. In Azure, I don't have any groups yet. So you click on Azure AD Overview and you go into Azure AD Connect Sync. Here I'm going to click on the link for Manage Azure AD Cloud Sync. Next, I'm going to click on Download Agent, accept the terms, and save the file locally. I'll copy it up to my domain controller. Now I'm just going to paste it in the C temp folder on my domain controller here. We're going to go ahead and download and install. I'm going to go ahead and download and install the .NET 4.7.1 runtime. We're going to cut a lot of this out because it takes a long time. Okay, now that I have .NET 4.7.1 installed, we can install the Azure AD Connect provisioning agent. Again here, you're going to need the cloud-only global administrator credential, and you're going to need a domain administrator credential to create the new group managed service account. And you want to use a group managed service account because you can install this provisioning agent on more than one machine to ensure availability of the provisioning service. Look for the link in the description down below to my video about Group Managed Service Accounts. After the initial installation, we come to the Configuration Wizard for the Azure AD Connect Provisioning Agent. Here is where you'll use your cloud-only Global Administrator account to authenticate to Azure AD. Now you're prompted for your domain administrator credentials so that you can create the group managed service account and connect to your local directory. Here you can see the local directory is already added and you can add other domains if you wish. Now we're just completing the installation and configuration of the Azure AD Connect provisioning agent. Now I'm going into computer management and looking at the services to make sure those Microsoft Azure AD Connect services are running right here. Now in Azure we can review all agents and you see the machine name and the external IP address of your active agents. I'm going to refresh that and begin a new configuration. Here's where you create the synchronization configuration. I've enabled password hash sync so my on-premise passwords are synchronized to the cloud. Once that configuration is created, we can edit the scope. In my case, I just want to select the organizational units for those users and those groups that I showed you in my Active Directory. Here you're going to use the distinguished name of those containers that you want to synchronize. Of course, if you change the selected organizational units, you're going to get a warning here indicating that you might delete users if you exclude a previously included organizational unit. Changes may result in deleting users. 
and you go to hit save and it warns you again and you can see that configuration is saving with those OU selections. So a little bit later I go into Azure AD and click on users and I see all my users are synchronized. I'm going to go into groups. There's my groups from Active Directory. They're synchronized and let's check the membership of one of those groups. Yes, that's right. Those are the members of that group in Active Directory on-prem. So I'm going to go back into Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync and show you the provisioning logs. You can use this for troubleshooting an object if it doesn't synchronize for some reason. Here you can see I have nothing but success in my provisioning logs. There are some key differences between Azure AD Connect on-prem and Azure AD Connect Cloud Sync. Some of these may prevent me from using this right away in our environment until these features are available. First is the support for device objects. We may want to synchronize devices for conditional access rules. Next, I want to be able to filter on objects based on attribute values. We already do that in our current sync configuration. I want to understand the implication of support for write back of passwords that's not currently available in the cloud sync version and also exchange hybrid write back are not available anyway i hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to azure ad connect cloud sync thank you very much so make sure to check all the links in the description down below please subscribe check out some of these other videos and thank you very much Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.